Ever since the Deep Dark was announced, I've always been looking forward to its release. Imagine the potential of me ruining it day one. But now it's been delayed two times. That's it, I'm making my own. Also, Sculpt Scribe. Anyway, so to start with the root of the evil, I added the Skulk Catalyst, which as you may know from Minecraft Live, will expand its grasp and spread some Skulk when a mob dies near it and drops experience orbs. But to be honest with you, that's terribly inefficient, so naturally, <laughs> I allowed it to spread out anonymously, and instead of waiting for mobs to be killed in its vicinity, well... <laughs> It'll, uh, it'll kill mobs itself. And as you can notice as well, it tends to spread a bit further than what was shown in Minecraft Live. Uh, don't worry about that, I just buffed it to infinity. Now because of that, a catalyst has the potential to gradually corrupt your entire world. But do not fret, the catalyst doesn't exactly work like a normal Minecraft block. If you go up to it, you'll start to notice really fast that you can't exactly mine it. Instead, you'll have to damage it with a weapon, and when doing so, it starts to recede. For every damage it takes, it's gonna convert back the blocks it converted to Skulk into what they were before. Until it eventually has no blocks left to convert, and then... It breaks. If there's one thing I find fun, it's messing with settings. See, that's why I, I, <laughs> I added a lot of rules to do so, but the two that will interest us are Skull Catalyst Bloom Delay and Skull Catalyst Bloom Rages. The Skull Catalyst Bloom Delay game rule handles how frequently the catalyst blooms, which means basically spread. So if we put it to something really, really high, we won't have time to wait, but you'll notice that it doesn't spread. But if we put it to something really low, like one, it will spread basically with no downtime. And the other game rule that will interest us is Skull Catalyst Bloom Rages, which handles how many blocks the Skull Catalyst converts upon blooming. By default it's set to 25, but if we put it to something like 100, you'll notice it spread a little bit more, and if we put it to something like a thousand, it spreads even faster. Now let's put it to 10,000. And yeah, you, you get the idea. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Like I said, infinite reach. <laughs> Now, there is one thing you won't get back when destroying a Skull Catalyst, grass and flowers. I am terribly sorry for that. But if you look on the bright side of things, you know, it, it's it's a great lawnmower. Now, if you remember, when I mentioned it was more efficient and killed mob by itself, you may have noticed that um, it didn't only kill mobs. See, when it was showcased on Minecraft Live, walking on a Skull Block doesn't seem to do anything to you. It doesn't seem to do much. And honestly, that's not going to cut it with me. So that's why when you walk on Skull Blocks, Every entity, including the player, will get slowness, mining fatigue, and also take some skulk damage. Now, let, let me just get off of this. Now, if you don't like this, don't worry, you can always wear a pair of boots. And in that case, you won't take any more damage, you won't get slowed anymore, but, uh, yeah, you, you'll still get mining fatigue because, obviously, your arms are still exposed. Now, it doesn't limit its reach to only living entities. It will naturally also absorb other non-living entities like boats, items, and even TNT. After seeing the Warden at Minecraft Live rise from the Skulk when it is summoned, I decided to do something similar with all normal mobs. See, when a mob dies from Skulk damage, it will rise again from the Skulk. These mobs will have a Skulk texture and uh, sometimes that may lead to some weird models like these, uh, these thick chicken legs. And obviously that works for every mob, leading to... Um, some interesting texture changes, to say the least. <laughs> and since I'm all about efficiency, sometimes when the Skulk Catalyst spreads, it may decide to spawn a hostile Skulk mob itself, as you can see with these spiders, creepers, and also the zombies and skeletons that are burning. As you can guess, these Skulk mobs aren't exactly just a retexture. They are faster on Skulk and will also be stronger and regenerate health on Skulk. But to compensate for that, they are blind and can only hear you if you get detected by a Skulk sensor. If you play it carefully, as you can see, these mobs won't do a single thing to you, they can't exactly see you or hear you. However, as soon as you step near a Skulk sensor and activate it, yeah, you're in for a bad time because they're also faster and every single one of them will target you if you get too close. Now, if you envy those Skulk mobs, I may hear you ask, but Rat, what about the players? Well... Yes. You can become a Skulk yourself. This changes the gameplay quite a bit and comes with a few perks and disadvantages. The first one, my vision is altered, I have a higher contrast and it makes it kind of painful to see in the day, but if we put it to nighttime, you can see our vision allows us to see better in the dark and in the caves, obviously, it's gonna be even better. Now, ignore the spots with the lava, obviously that's gonna burn your eyes. You'll also notice that you have a lower health and cannot hold any items other than skull blocks and cannot pick them up as well. You are faster and get regeneration on skulk and skulk mobs won't do anything to you and you won't trigger skulk sensor at all. And because you're basically a mini warden, your most interesting ability is the ability to see vibrations through walls. For instance, with trapdoors opening and closing, or bells ringing or pistons extending, 
those will make vibrations. And like I said, even in survival, you can see those through walls. So yeah, um, <laughs> beware of noise machines. And in multiplayer, that also means that you'll be able to see vibrations from player movement if they are not sneaky. However, if they are sneaky or stand still, well, they will appear invisible to you. Unless they are detected by a skulk sensor, in that case, they'll be revealed to you even if they go selfie, just like they are revealed to all of us skulk mobs. But that's not everything that you can do. You can also mine skulk blocks to get them in your inventory directly and build with them. But why is that? Well, you can teleport to them. And since you cannot suffer suffocation damage, that also leads to pretty cool uses, like getting out of caves like this, for instance, where you can just straight up beam to the surface. You can also make pretty cool skulk elevators with parkour. <laughs> or you can also hide under the skulk and, you know, rise whenever your prey is close. And one final cool feature is that if there are multiple catalysts in your world, like I put one here and one there, you can relocate randomly to another catalyst if you wish to do so and you know, just travel around your world this way. Oh, and one last thing, even if you're hungry, just don't drink the skulk.